It is one of the most formidable objects in all of strength sports, the Wheel of Pain. And it is up first here at the 2023 Arnold Strongwoman Classic. Columbus, Ohio, for the next three days, it is the capital of the strength world as we are set to kick off the 2023 Arnold Strongwoman Classic. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lauren Chalet. Kiki Dixon is the third member of our broadcast team. We'll be hearing from her in just a second. And usually, Laws, we're getting set to talk about the strongest men in the world. Now we get to talk about the strongest women in the world, and I'm really excited to see these athletes on this big of a stage so good that the ladies are getting the same opportunity as the men. Obviously, I've been following the sport for so long. I know the women personally, and they are absolutely ecstatic to be here, to be in front of this huge crowd that we've got behind us. It's going to be an incredible show of strength today. Ten of the strongest women in the world will be competing over the next two days for the first time on this stage, and here they are. Uh, Victoria Long, we're going to be talking about her in just a second. She may be the favorite to win this whole thing, but she has a lot of competition to deal with over these next two days. Tamara Walcott, we've seen her in some Rogue Record Breakers events in the past. This is her first ever strong woman competition. Looking forward to seeing what she can do. But as I mentioned, Victoria Long comes in as the favorite to stand atop the podium when it is all said and done here at the Arnold Strong Woman Classic. Kiki Dixon has more on that. Victoria Long is your reigning and defending strong woman champion. She also won the Shaw Classic and she's America's fittest woman. She's been the most dominant athlete for the last year, year and a half. And that's because not only is she winning these titles, she's winning the majority of the events within those competitions. So the question arises, is she beatable? And I think we're gonna get an answer here this weekend at the Arnold Strong Woman Classic as it unfolds. Thank you, Kiki, and she has been absolutely dominant, and we will see how she handles that. The Wheel of Pain, the opening event of the 2023 Arnold Strongwoman Classic. You get to push it for 60 seconds as far as you can. You get one attempt in which to do that, and that thing weighs about 20,000 pounds, more than 9,070 kilos. Keys to the event are presented by Beyond the Whiteboard Laws. What do you got to do to be successful at this? This is such an epic looking event. And I think every single strong man, strong woman out there, when they see this competition and they see this, this implement, they want to try it. I know the ladies are really excited. The guys that haven't done it before are excited as well. But I can tell you, this event is brutal. It's going to be, their legs are going to be screaming. The lactic acid that's going to build up in those legs as they get closer and closer to that 60 second time limit. It's all about fighting through that pain. You need to make Make sure you're in a strong position, keep driving the legs, and unlike an, a normal vehicle push or pull, the start isn't the hardest on this, but it's just zapping. Every step you take, the sand kind of flips into those barrels and it drains you. Real interesting point of this is how much it affects is the next event. The order of competitors is on the left. It's going to be Mel Peacock, who is going to be up first. She's out of Canada has seven international contests under her belt. She's won two of them. She's a great competitor as well. She's um, one of the lightest athletes we've got competing. Very strong lower body. She's got strong legs. I'm looking forward to seeing how she does on this one. She's getting some last minute instructions from Steve Slater there. First athlete out, the nerves are gonna be kicking in. Not just the first athlete, but the first time they've been on this stage as well. So there's a lot on you know, riding for these women. And the rules for this go at the Wheel of Pain a little bit different than we've seen in the past. Uh, when this was first introduced in 2019, we saw the men do it. They could push it essentially by any means necessary, but that's that's changed here in 2023. Yeah, that's correct. So now the athletes, they can choose whichever bar they want to use, but their hands have to be on the ropes and they've got to be pushing forwards. They're not allowed to turn and use their back. 
they're not allowed to go under with their, their head and shoulders. They need to keep those hands on the rope and just keep driving hard. And Melissa's off to a steady start. Now, what's important is that she keeps this going. You can see body weight makes a big difference on these type of events as well. And Melissa is potentially the lightest athlete we've got competing. She has hugely strong, powerful legs. She needs to maximize the use of those quads. She's in a good, solid position there, just needs to keep driving. One step at a time, not burn out too early. She's probably trying to pace herself, and you can see it's getting hard, but she needs to dig deep because some of the other women are going to come out and push this as far as they can. First athlete, you've got to set the pace. It's so hard in an event like this where it's all about distance as the first athlete. Once you've got a marker to beat, you do manage to push that little bit harder. The final 10 seconds for Peacock. She's listed at 185 pounds, only 84 kilos, and she has done some pretty impressive work on the wheel of pain unofficially 30 feet for Mel Peacock to set the early mark here. So Mel's a great deadlifter. I'm not, it, it's hard to tell how that distance will be. I think we're going to see some of the ladies push a fair bit further. Like I said, Mel, one of the, the lightest athletes. I know her prep for this competition hasn't been perfect, but we we'll look forward to seeing her in future events. Let's see what the next athletes can do. It's unofficially 30 feet for Melissa Peacock. The first woman to ever push the wheel of pain in a competition. Yes. Like I said at the start, you know, once this was introduced back in 2019, it's an event that every single strength athlete wants to try. We've got so many watching this competition and I can promise you they all want to try it. Myself last night, I was down there and I wanted to touch it. I kind of had a little push. But when you are pushing for a few feet, and a few seconds is very different to going that full 60 seconds and the legs are screaming at the athletes. Just see, she just came to a dead stop there. Those legs filled up with that blood, and unable to go any further than the 30 feet. 20,000 pounds is about what that implement weighs. It's going to be a little bit different for the women than it will be for the men. The barrels that you see it's rolling on, right now those are filled with about 125 pounds, 56 kilos of sand. They will add to that when the women, or I'm sorry, when the men take the floor. And when, what the sand does, it's just hard to get any momentum on that thing. Absolutely. Like I said, it, you know, people can compare it to like a vehicle push or pull, but a vehicle... Once you get you break that initial inertia, it can get a little bit easier for a while. Whereas this is just the same all the time. You kind of go a few feet, and it's like restarting once again. But our next athlete, Victoria Long, last year's champion. This will show us what a good distance is. She has won the last four competitions in which she has competed. The incredible thing with Victoria is her consistency. You know, we talk about consistency with the likes of last year's men's champion, Martins Lissis. Victoria is very much in that same vein. She might not win every single event, but it's very rare we see her drop a huge amount of points. So this should give us a good distance of what is possible on the Wheel of Pain for our ladies. And as you heard Kiki Dixon mention, the question is, is she beatable? There probably are one or two women who can beat her, but in order to knock her from the top, you've got to get more than that between you know, her and first place. We're in a sporting event where anything is possible, and we have the best lineup of women we've ever seen. But, yeah, if I was a betting man, Victoria would be the one I'd be uh, parting with my money on at the start of the competition. Let's see how it plays out. Ten seconds for Victoria Long, and we are underway. Second athlete to go, 30 feet from Mel Peacock is the top mark. And already she's moving much quicker than Mel was, taking bigger strides. She's a much taller athlete as well. She carries more body weight. And now she's into a good rhythm, but she needs to keep this going. Like I said with Mel's, uh, Mel's attempt, it's not so much the start on this. The start is the easy bit. You have to keep grinding, keep pushing. And it's when those legs fill up with blood and you've still got to keep pushing, that's when you separate yourself from the rest of the field. And she has now passed Mel Peacock's mark of 30 feet and still has more than 20 seconds to go. And she's not gone as far past as I might be, may be expected. The other ladies watching backstage will be looking at this thinking, OK, maybe she is beatable. Now, all we can really compare on is what we've seen the men do. And I think we're, we're up at 112 foot for our best distance for the men, which um, is Kiliuszkowski out of the athletes competing. 
So that's kind of where I'm comparing right now. And you're looking at these distance thinking, OK, we, we, we expect them to do a little bit more. But we don't have any information to go off from past performances. So we'll have to see. Looks like that's going to be about 47 feet for Victoria Long. That will put her in first place. But we still have eight more women. So she did pass. So the I think 30 foot mark. the score on the on the screen right there, I think that is wrong. I thought they were it looked like they were marking it around the 47 foot mark. So we will have to wait for the official word on that. But she is your leader now with eight women remaining. Again, started well, good driving. Interesting foot choice, uh, footwear choices. And that's an important thing on this type of event is getting the right footwear. Normally, if you're outdoors, athletes would use a rock climbing type shoe to, to kind of grip against the floor. In here on the mats, I think maybe like a walking shoe or something like that would be my personal choice. You kind of want to create good grip. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon. She's with the first athlete to go, Mel Peacock. I think that the toughest event was the Apollo Wheels. I mean, I was able to master it. Mel, you're the very first female strong woman to get hands on the Wheel of Pain. What was the experience like? Honestly, super emotional. <laughs> Just being here is like, we're making history this weekend. And yeah, I'm just super blessed to be here. I have no words, honestly. <laughs> Was it more difficult than you thought, or were you able to find a cadence with it? Honestly, I didn't really have expectations going into this because, like, unlike a log press where they can say, oh, it's X amount of weight with this, you don't really know. You just have to show up and be prepared for it being really heavy, which it was really heavy. <laughs> so, yeah, you just got to do what you got to do. Well, congratulations. You got through the wheel of pain. We'll see how the rest of the weekend goes. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Kiki. Two women down, eight to go. Rebecca Roberts, the Welsh Wonder Woman, will be up next. Now, I'm really excited to watch Rebecca on this. I, I got a sneak peek of them trying this out yesterday, and she actually looked really, really good. So Rebecca's the, she was the alternate for this competition, but she's been training as if she was coming. Got the call up, and now she's got her opportunity to show what she's capable of. She's built perfectly for this type of event. Let's see how she does. Six foot four. Former world strongest woman back in 2021. So you mentioned that she should do well here. Let's put some perspective on that. Are we looking for her to win? Is this a damage control event? She, top five? If she's looking to come and challenge for this title, she needs to be top three on this event. She will be wanting a really good start. And like I said, I think this event is going to suit her. Rebecca Roberts will need to beat about 47 feet in order to take the top mark away from Victoria Long. She's been so through so much emotional stress recently. Her, her partner passed away just uh, late last year, and she's really kind of focused on the training to keep her in a good headspace. She's doing it for, for Paul, and, you know, that... That motivation makes people dig a little bit harder. I'm excited to see what she can do here. And here goes Rebecca Roberts. And she's moving this well. She's one of the biggest athletes, which helps on these type of events. Having that body weight helps. Strong legs, good positioning there. She's just got her head down and driving hard, one foot after the other. Keep stepping, keep pushing. And this is moving very, very well. Goes past Melissa Peacock's distance there. And now, now she is the leader. And she's not slowing down as well. This is looking very, very good. Come on, Rebecca, keep digging deep. This is what we expected. This is a hell of a performance now. She's really working hard, not stepping off the gas at all. 15 seconds to go for Rebecca Roberts. Wow, this is incredible. Come on, Rebecca, keep it going. Can she break 100 foot? 
And Rebecca Roberts Climbing smashing the wheel of pain. 84 feet unofficially. What a distance. Take a bow, Rebecca Roberts. Now that's the kind of start that that lady wanted. Well done, Rebecca Roberts. Let's take another look at that impressive effort from the Welsh Wonder Woman. Look at this. You just, you could tell right from the start she was moving really, really comfortably. She's one of the biggest athletes. With just short, powerful steps, using those quads well, pushing hard with the arms. And the impressive thing, she just didn't slow down. She just kept driving and driving and driving all the way through that 60 second time limit. Great performance there by Rebecca Roberts. And with seven athletes to go, Rebecca Roberts putting up an impressive mark, looking to possibly win the opening event here of the 2023 Arnold Strong Women Classic. And we were talking about this earlier. You're not going to win it today, but you can lose it. And if you're in great position after day one, we talk about consistency very often when it comes to, to strong men and strong women competitions. And it is so important. Let's go to Kiki Dixon with Victoria Long. Victoria, a lot of the athletes have been talking about whether or not they've had expectations for this particular wheel of pain because you guys haven't been able to get your hands on it before. But did you have expectations for your performance with this? Um, I wouldn't say that I had an expectation. Um, like you said, we none of us have had a chance to train on this. So all you can do as an athlete is um, come up with the best training technique that works for you and then just roll with it. And what happens at contest happens. Now, if you got another crack at it, would there be anything that you did differently? Um, there's a few slight things that I would have maybe tried to, you know, uh, switch up a little bit. You know, whether or not that would have made a huge difference, I don't know, but. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Victoria Long now in second place after Rebecca Roberts just put up 92 feet, 9 inches wow. officially. That is impressive. Hannah Lindsay will be up next. We go from the Welsh Wonder Woman to the Swamp Monster. I'm excited to watch Hannah Lindsay. She's just such an intense athlete. And this is another athlete that's looked good on this event in the, in the familiarization last night. Yeah, moved this really well. The athletes had a chance to practice a little bit last night, and she and Rebecca Roberts were two of the women who had the most success with the Wheel of Pain. And you may notice the arms, they're at different heights here, but as we were talking earlier, there's really no reason to not use the lowest one. Mechanically, you're going to put yourself in the strongest position on the lowest arm. Now, Lindsay is set. I don't know if the Wheel of Pain has ever been afraid, but it might be now. I'm actually a little bit afraid myself, stood here watching. But Hannah, Hannah's such a fierce competitor, but a lovely athlete away from competition. But she wants to win. She loves to prove to everyone what she's capable of. Third place at last year's Arnold Strongwoman competition. She wants to improve on that. 92 feet, 9 inches is the mark that she will be shooting for here. The Swamp Monster versus the Wheel of Pain. She's not moving as well as Rebecca was at the start. But Lindsay going with some more methodical steps. We've seen sort of the shorter, quicker steps uh, from Rebecca Roberts. But she is continuing to push that forward. Still pushing. One thing you'd have to be careful with as an athlete on these type of events that are going to last the full 60 seconds is you don't want to burn up too much energy beforehand. And that potentially could be something we're seeing here. You know, she's such an intense athlete. When you're psyching yourself up that much, has she perhaps burnt out a little bit more energy early on? Because she looked better than this warming up last night. But it all comes down to what you do on the day. All about performance on the day, not what we do two weeks before or the night before. 
and unfortunately, I don't think she's going to be too happy with that. Well, Lindsay will be in third place with that mark of third or fourth. We need to. That looks like four, 36 feet. So she. That's not the start she wanted. Has some trouble at the start. She was able to move, but again, it just wasn't at the pace that we saw Rebecca Roberts get out of the gates. Yeah, Rebecca right away was moving the quickest we've seen out of anyone. So as you said, and as we saw, very psyched up beforehand. And then a pretty good initial push there, but then the pace started to slow. Yeah, like, like I said, I, I was definitely expecting more from Hannah on that one. And I think she, she will be disappointed. And this is where she really started to labor. It's interesting footwear choice again. So far, I think um, Rebecca Roberts just went with standard trainers, and that seemed to have been the most effective. And that's where that technique is legal, and it's going to be good enough for fourth place, but the woman who's your overall leader is Rebecca Roberts, and she is with Kiki Dixon. Rebecca, you had an incredible performance at your go at the Wheel of Pain. It looked like you were doing short and steady t steps. Is that what just ended up happening, or is that intentional in your approach to this? Um, it was all about just being consistent and using the whole time consistently and not going off too fast at the start and just making sure that you're kind of just being slow and consistent throughout the whole way. Now, this is the first year that we have the women competing alongside the men with the same implements. What does that mean to you? Oh, it means everything to know that we are being showcased on the same stage as the men in front of a massive crowd of people showing that what we can do because we work just as hard and we deserve to be here. You certainly do, and you prove that. Congratulations. Thank you. Rebecca Roberts, your leader right now in the Wheel of Pain is Donna Moore. Talking things over with Steve Slater. She will be the next woman up. I got to say, I love that approach from um, Rebecca there as well, talking about saving energy, kind of making sure she was consistent throughout the whole of that push. And she, so far, is in an incredible lead ahead of Victoria Long there in second place. Donna Moore, three-time world champion. One of the driving forces to increasing the popularity of strong women. She's been so incredible over the last 10 years. 14 international contests, and she's won six of them. She's a formidable competitor, always gives 100%. Actually has lost a lot of body weight in recent times and maybe not quite as strong as she used to be, but she still fights hard and still one of the best on the planet. Yeah, listed at 187 pounds, about 85 kilos. And she will try to track down Rebecca Roberts' incredible mark of 92 feet, 9 inches. That really is <laughs> an impressive distance. I know the weight is different, but it will be interesting to see where that score stacks up compared to what the men do. Yes, definitely. We will be halfway through the field after Donna Moore's attempt. Here goes Donna Moore. There we go. So Donna going for the more steady approach. And you can see how that thing kind of rocked back on her when she first pushed yeah. it. And that's what that, that stand does in those tumblers. You just cannot get any real Good. momentum on this. Into a better rhythm now. And she's got some markers that she'll be aiming to go past. So she knows every little name she goes past is good points. This is good, solid work by the former three-time world's strongest woman. Donna's already moved herself into third place. I think she possibly and now that should second be second place now. This is a really ten good. seconds left. Yes, come on, Donna, keep working now. 
I don't think she's going to catch Rebecca, but there's still some formidable strong women to come. She needs to keep pushing as hard as she can. Donna Moore will be in second place with five women remaining about 54 feet unofficially for her. And that is a solid effort for Donna really Moore. Good. Yeah, really good performance there from Donna Moore. I think she's going to be over the moon with that one. Let's take another look. Donna Moore moves herself into second place with five women to go. So Donna using that kind of, she, she knew what she was capable of, didn't kind of blast out the blocks too fast, tried to pace herself, and it paid off well there. Very, very good distance. Worked hard throughout the full 60 seconds. Good positioning there, driving hard with every single step. You really can't kind of cruise on this type of event. You've got to keep working with every single drive of the foot. And Donna did that very effectively there. 54 feet for Donna Moore, puts her into second place so far. And was able to stay steady throughout that minute effort. And I'm betting that's probably the longest minute of her life right there. <laughs> you can guarantee. Let's go to Kiki Dixon and Jerry Pritchett. Let's send it to Kiki Dixon and Jerry Pritchett. Jerry, you've been able to watch, keep a close eye, I should say, on what these athletes have been doing as they've been coming through. What techniques are you seeing that's working and what's not so much so far? So the, the biggest difference is, is the, the athletes are taking those big strides. They get it moving and they, they continue with the big strides. It's just taking too much energy, too much power to put in those big strides. Where like the two best times we've had are short, choppy steps. Just keep it moving, kind of like a truck pull. Those are, and, the other key is to keep the shoulders in a locked out position with your head through, where you kind of get your hands out in front of you like you're almost like having to constantly push on it. There's two taxes on the shoulders, just wears you out too fast. And you would certainly know, because you have pushed this was twice? Uh, I believe three times. Or three times. Third time's a charm, perhaps. Were you reliving through your journey while you were watching the Wheel of Pain happen here? Yeah, definitely. You know, a couple of athletes asked backstage. Donna just asked, as some short, choppy steps, you know, just learn from my own experiences. And as you can see the difference on the ones that, you know, they're just wasting too much power on those big strides. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate your insight. Thank you, Kiki and Jerry. Inez Carasquillo is up next. Great insight there from Jerry Pritchard, a man that's done this a number of times. And yeah, he, he's talking about those smaller steps, they save energy. You go for those bigger steps, you're requiring too much power, too much energy is being burnt up when you try and do that. It's like doing like a deep squat versus a, a, a quarter squat, mm -hmm. basically. You're gonna be able to handle more weight in that shorter range of motion. Inez here, another fantastic athlete. Someone that's really burst on the scene over the last few years. Interested to see how she does on this one. Such an unknown, this event. It's exciting for me watching. You know, I know what they can do on the deadlifts. I know what they can do on the log lifts, but this is so new to all these athletes. Inez Carasquillo is someone who's inspired by Tom Stolman. She herself has autism. Tom Stolman, someone as well. Strong Woman has helped Inez so, so much. She's really transformed her life around, has given her a focus, and she really is one of the absolute best in the world right now. She has that moving pretty well now. Moving really well now. Look at the arm positioning. The head is through. Nicely locked out like Jerry was mentioning earlier. Driving hard with every step. This is moving very well. Those shorter steps that Jerry was talking about also being employed by Kara Squillo. And now she has she already moved past three competitors. Halfway. A fourth place Into now. Third place. And... Creeping up on Donna Moore's mark. Needs to keep working. She's got about 20 seconds to go. Needs to keep pushing. Just burning that energy out a little bit too much now. And look at that, how that sand makes it rock back when you stop pushing. But she's digging she deep. She is so close to second place right now. And she get past Donna Moore. 
Oh, she's given everything, but those legs have just given out on her. That's going to be really close, but it looks like it's going to be third place right now for Carasquillo. And go back to what we talked about you know, at the beginning with Victoria Long being the favorite. Well, so far, three people have gotten ahead of her in this opening event. Absolutely, with four fantastic athletes still to come. So Victoria, I don't believe, was outside the top three on an event last year. This is you know, showing, this, firstly, the standard that we have competing right now, but also this new type of event. I'd always expect the athletes, when they try a second time, to be a little bit better and understand the implement a little bit more. Inez started really well, but you can see there are quite big steps, which in the end just burnt up a little bit too much. But still, very solid performance, I think, uh, finishing in third place there. Such a cool looking piece of kit. When you kind of, when you go out the, onto the stage, you realize how big it is. Yeah, it is massive. Let's go to Kiki Dixon, who is with Donna Moore. Donna, one of the fellas in the booth was saying that might have been the longest minute of your life. True or false? I'm pretty sure it's fairly true right now, especially of, of today. That was a, a grind, but it was the coolest piece of equipment and I just wanted to give it as good as I could. So I, I did a good job. I'm happy with that performance for me. Yeah. You're happy with your performance here on the Wheel of Pain. Which other events are you really looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to like the, I say cool things, <laughs> but um, the stone throw, I'm looking forward to that because I like stone throwing and I'm really looking forward to the frame up the ramp. The other two, not so much the log and the deadlift, but I enjoy stuff that sucks like this. So it's, that's my jam. And now why aren't you looking towards those other events? Because um, although my overhead is really quite good, it's not the best on a log lift. So it's just one of those things. And also my deadlift is not as big as some of the other ladies. So it's time just to dig in and try my best, which I will. We look forward to seeing you. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll, we look forward to keeping our eyes on you, and congratulations on this incredible performance with the Wheel of Pain. Beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I'm so glad to have a chance to try on it. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Kiki. And Donna Moore still in the top three with now four athletes remaining. Olga Leoshuk is going to be next. Now, Olga is the current world's strongest woman. Well, Last night, she was testing this equipment over and over. She's nervous about it, trying to figure out the best way to do it. Now, we need to see, was that nerves and was it insecurity on this event or was she just that type of athlete that wants to make sure she's got everything right for today? The wheel of pain, 20,000 pounds. It is 21 feet tall. And it looks a lot like the one in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Conan. The real, the biggest difference is just the height. They had to make it smaller in order to make it fit into the building. <laughs> <laughs> Olga Lachuk, current world's strongest woman. She's also a former champion here at the Arnolds. Real determined athlete, let's see how she does on the Wheel of Pain. Well, you mentioned last night that she was the one athlete that really messed around with this the most. Is this a damage control event for her, given what you saw from practice, or do you think she has a chance to put up a really good score here? I, one thing with these Ukrainian athletes, they're very smart, and they often kind of, we see it with Nova uh, no, uh, quite often. He's, um, he's methodical, he's thinking about how to do things. And sometimes you watch him in training, and then suddenly he's, he, he doesn't look so good, and then in competition he's good. Will we see that with Olga right now? She's a very determined athlete, and already she's looking better than she did last night. Not fast, but she's driving slow and steady, making sure each step keeps moving. And 20 seconds gone by. And she's, she's clearly not gonna beat the likes of Rebecca Roberts here, but she will be looking at some of those names on the floor and thinking, right, I need to pick up points now. I've got better events to come. And she's moving steadily. She's, you know, she's still got almost 20 seconds to go. There's names that she can go past, keep picking up points. And that's the advantage of going later on an event like this. You know, you don't have to think, I need to go flat out and beat Rebecca's distance. You can see markers on the floor and think, OK, I can beat that. I'm not going to beat that distance in front of me, so I'll just put enough effort in and save that for later. 
save the energy for the, for the events to come. Well, right now she's in fourth place, and that will do it for her 60-second effort. So fourth place for Olga with three women remaining. Solid result for her. Yep. And again, another athlete that's knocked Victoria Long down a place. So not the event we were expecting from Victoria. Still three phenomenal athletes to come. And the word that comes to my mind when I think about this is just steady. Yes, yeah, there was nothing kind of blistering about it, but she just worked hard. And she's that type of athlete, you know, Olga is tough. She works hard for every single event. That's why she's won so many titles. So Olga Lischuk is in fourth place right now, but let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with Inez Carasquillo. You've completed your first event here at the Arnold Strong Woman Classic. What are the emotions? Where are the emotions at now that you've got your first one under your belt and you've got several more events to go? Um, so I feel really good. Uh, this was the event I was like most worried about, really, um, besides the deadlift. So, because you can't really practice this at home. So we didn't really know how it was going to play out. Um, I'm feeling happy. Second place is a good place to start right now. So hopefully I keep my position. And yeah, I had a lot of fun. It showed. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And there's Curtis Creole right now in second place. As we have three athletes remaining. And Tamara Walcott will be up next, making her first appearance in a competition. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. We've seen Tamara here at the uh, Arnolds before taking part in the Rogue Record Breakers. Unbelievable deadlifter. She is the powerlifting world champion. So we know she has the static strength. The interesting thing for me now is watching how she can do in a full strongwoman competition. Her first ever strongwoman competition is the Arnold Strongwoman Classic. What a contest to take part in. Last year, she deadlifted 641 pounds at the Rogue Record Breakers during the Arnold Sports Festival. We got to watch that. So this will really show us. If, if she puts in a big performance in, on this event, I think the other girls are going to take notice because we know she's going to be good at the deadlift. You'd expect that kind of bench pressing power that she has to be able to transition into the overhead. And I think watching her deadlift last year, where she did the deadlift without straps, I think she's going to be good at the frame carry as well. So this is the one. She's used to power. She's like one rep, heavy weights. This is more endurance based. Let's see how she can transition to this type of event. She's a real unknown in the strong woman world. We know she's a great power lifter. She's got this like regalness about her. She's a mother of two sons and works as a property manager when she's not slinging around heavy weight. Samara Walcott's first ever strong woman competition and the first event she's taking on is the Wheel of Pain. <laughs> Got to be a pretty nerve wracking welcome to the big time strong woman competition world. It's, I like that she's staying nice and calm. She's got that competitive experience from the powerlifting world. Knows how to win. That's important as an athlete, knowing how to pick up the W. She's not here to make up numbers. Let's see how this goes. And here she goes, and right away, she has that wheel moving. One thing interesting is the turned out foot. You can see that foot that's turned out slightly. That's going to put her in a mechanically weaker position. She needs to try and keep that ankle and toe in line with each other. She's moving steadily. Not as quick as I think she'd like, but she's still moving and she knows there'll be targets to beat. I can't see her challenging some of the, the top distances on this. Now, this was always the, the worry with someone like Tamara who has incredible one rep strength in the gym. We know her legs are strong, but that's for one repetition. Strong man, strong woman competitions, you've got to go through that lactic acid kind of territory. And she's struggling here, currently in last position. 
Walcott is trying to track down. There we go. She's getting it. Can she go past? Is it Hannah Lindsay's distance? Hannah Lindsay for seventh, and she is right there, but it looks like time is going to run out. I don't think she's managed to do it. And doesn't look like she's going to get there. So Walcott will be in eighth place with just two athletes remaining. Powerlifting is, you create incredible strength as a powerlifter, and that there is definitely advantages that you can kind of take into the strong man, strong woman world. But it isn't just a guarantee just because you're good at squatting, deadlift, or benching that you make a great strength athlete. There's a lot of events that are very different. The muscles work in a different way. So Tamara will be in eighth place, and you heard Carasquillo talking to Kiki Dixon about prepping for this event. And a lot of different athletes have found different ways to practice. Jerry Pritchett was one of them, and he is with Kiki Dixon. Jerry, you've pushed this wheel of pain three times previously. What did you do to prepare for that? I did a variation of pushing a yoke in the, in the gym, almost using it like a sled. I pushed truck with, with hooking a tire. I think one of the last times we did, we did with the Conan's wheel, where I put wheels on my Conan's wheel in the carriage and then hooked a tire to it. We put a sandbag in the tire. That way I could push in the arc of this because it's a little bit different than pushing straight. That seemed to be the, the most effective, but it, it's, it's a brutal event. So I, you do whatever you can to train for it, but it still doesn't replicate what those sands, the sands doing in those drums. It's not the same. I was going to say, how surprising, the first time that you approached the Wheel of Pain, even with all the training that you did, how surprising was the actual event itself? Yeah, the, the first time I didn't feel prepared at all. Um, didn't help that I had a torn hamstring going into it after deadlifts. But it, it, it's just, it, it's so much different than pushing it with the sand churning in those wheels versus pushing a sled. You know, whereas a sled, once you get it moving, it's, it's just constant. You know, it doesn't have that stop, like a break, like that sand grates. So it's, just, it's, it's, it's really hard to replicate in training. So being the, the performances that we're seeing, you know, for their first time on the wheel is really impressive. Appreciate your insight, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Kiki and Jerry. Andrea Thompson will be up next, someone you are very familiar with as her coach. Yeah, yeah, I've been coaching Andrea for a few years now. She's an incredibly strong athlete. This will be an event she's nervous about. She likes the, the, the power type events, the log, the deadlift. Uh, but it's something we've worked hard on. And, you know, Jerry mentioned there uh, the different ways he's trained it. Basically, we've just been pushing a, um, a, a, a four by four for a minute, trying to get used to that lactic acid buildup and, and hopefully not burn out too much. So we'll see how it plays out. Like Jerry said, it, nothing really gets you prepared for this implement. Andrea, very, very strong in the lower body. Incredible shoulder strength. Now, if you could talk to her right now, what are you telling her? Just give 100%. You know, you've done the training now. Now it's all about competition. It's just keeping your mindset focused and wanting it more than the next person. She's going to have to see those markers and want it and dig deep. She knows she's capable. She knows she's got strong legs. She knows she's well prepared. Now it's all about doing it on the day. Every single one of these athletes at the start here, they're going to be super nervous. Not just for the competition itself, the events, but the pressure of having this huge crowd watching them. They're not used to that. You know, the guys we know are used to that kind of bigger crowd now, but for a lot of them, they're not used to this size of crowd. So nerves are going through. Here goes Andrea Thompson. So Andrew off to a steady start as well. Not as quick as the likes of, of Rebecca that we've already seen is blistering distance. Andrea needs to be very similar to Tamara and some of the others and just keep pushing as hard as she can. We are at about the halfway point and Thompson continuing to move and, and there's the, the names that she's looking at taking those points now. Now she's already moved into six. This is a big advantage that you have. I said earlier, but the later you get to go on an event, on an event like this, in your head you're thinking, okay, I'm not going to worry about the likes of, of Rebecca, but I can see these names in front of me. I know I'm ahead of 
Victoria Long, for instance, just there. That's good points. Managed to get it going again. Fifth place for Andrea Thompson. 48 feet unofficially. <laughs> Got to be happy with that as her coach. As long as she's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> as, you know, uh, it's, she knows she's got some great events coming up, and I think she'll be happy enough with that. It started with those choppy steps, and then the pace slowed a little bit, but good enough for fifth place. Yeah, fifth place on this type of event for Andrea, she'll be satisfied with. And, you know, we've said this from the start. With all these women, they have different strengths and weaknesses. It's about putting as many points together on every event as possible. You mentioned earlier, you can't win the, day, the competition on day one, but you can certainly lose it. And, you know, she's still in there in a solid position with some of her best events to come. Through nine women, it's still Rebecca Roberts. i got to say, how um, incredible. Looking at those distances is Rebecca Roberts' 92.8. Nine foot push. That is such a great lead over everyone else. And she's almost 30 feet ahead of second place in Ez Carasquillo. That's how dominant Rebecca Roberts has been. Let's send it back down to Kiki Dixon. You're a power lifter coming into the strong women. How's the crash course going? The crash course seems to be going good. I have, I'm having fun. I'm used to just picking up heavy weight, but now I have to pick it up and move with it. So it's been exciting, yeah. And how's the training been going leading into this? Who did you look for or look to for inspiration, advice, as far as strong women events go? So I was definitely looking at Andrea, looking at Sam, looking at Donna, all their videos, Swampy. So it's kind of like, you know when you're having a baby, you look at the baby story? I was looking at all the strong man videos on YouTube. So that's kind of how my 10 weeks has been going, because I actually only had about 10 weeks of training for this. That's incredible. We love having you out here. I love being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Yeah. Sam Beliveau will be your final woman out on the floor. And Maxime Boudreau is the man in the wheelchair on the right. He got injured recently, but that's Sam's partner, and I'm sure she's been able to glean some information from him because he has some experience with this. He does indeed, and how incredible would it have been to have them both competing? Such a shame for Maxime, but Sam Bellevue, another fantastic competitor. One of the smaller athletes, again, normally competes in the lighter weight class. He's competing against the, the, the heavyweights this weekend. She's so happy to be here. And again, another athlete is going to give 100%. Her fourth appearance in international competition. She won the 2022 U82 Arnold Amateur Strongwoman competition. Let's see what Sam Bellavo can do with her 60-second effort. 92 feet, 9 inches is the mark to beat. And then we have a whole cluster of athletes about 13 feet apart in second through fifth. See what Sam can do. Sixty seconds for Sam Bellavo. So her positioning's really good. Just needs to make sure that arm stays locked out. She's got the right arm locked out. The left arm's kind of giving in slightly, which will lose that power that she's driving through with the legs. But her lower body's working hard, maintaining really nice body position. Those hips are in a great position. She's working hard still. Now about has jumped into seconds. seventh place. Yeah, this is good. This is really good from Sam. Six is well within reach for her with 20 seconds to go. Needs to dig deep. Can she get past Victoria Long? She does, I believe. Andrea Thompson's distance is next. 
Oh, Only nine seconds to back. go. Can she get it going? Just change and to that Sam with one technique. last push. Look at this effort by Sam. Oh, not sure if she was able to move into fifth, but 48 feet for her and a sixth place finish for Sam Bellavo. Looked like she was out of gas there, but she gave it everything. As long as I you have that. your hands on that wheel of pain, you can lean into it, and that worked for her. I love seeing that. You can, you know, she's exhausted, but there was no quit in this young lady. So, as you mentioned early on, Laws, that left arm just buckling a little bit in the initial phases of this push. It's just little things like that that, you know, you, know, you, you, you take a small percentages. And this is where Bellavo started tracking down some competitors, and that was that last final push, getting her into sixth place. It's going to be Rebecca Roberts, though, who dominates this event more than 92 feet. She picks up the 10 points and she is with Kiki Dixon. Rebecca, congratulations on your event win. And to think you were an alternate. What are you gonna do with this opportunity that has been put before you that you've worked so hard for to come out, get an event win with four more events to go? Oh, I'm just here to show the world what I can do. I'm gonna make a statement this weekend and I'm going to prove a point that I deserve to be here. We have a great crowd in attendance cheering you guys on under the bright lights. How much does that impact what you're doing on the competition floor? Oh, it was incredible. As I was pushing the Wheel of Pain, all I could hear was the support and it was spurring me on. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Great start for Rebecca Roberts, as you heard Kiki say, an alternate here, but just dominated but she, with this effort. She was saying there, she just wants to prove she belongs to be here. She 100% belongs here. Winner of the first event, and like you say, not just the winner, she dominated that event. 92 feet. The perfect start there for Rebecca Roberts. And that, because it's the first time, is a world record for the women. <laughs> Indeed. Your results for the Wheel of Pain is going to be Rebecca Roberts, who locks up the 10 points. Inez Carasquillo will finish second, nearly 30 feet behind Rebecca. That's how dominant that performance was. Donna Moore sits in third, followed by Olga Lischuk, and then Sam Bellavo does get herself into fifth with that last push. And a little surprising to see Victoria Long down in seventh place after that event. Yeah, really interesting looking at that leaderboard. Some of the biggest names, Hannah Lindsay, Victoria Long, and Andrea Thompson, all outside the top five. Olga will be very pleased with that result, I think, as will Donna Moore. But Rebecca Roberts, dominating performance, 92.9 foot on the Wheel of Pain. We will take a quick break. We will get reset. The men will be up next as we kick off the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic. So stay with us, everybody from Columbus, Ohio.